Hey everybody, how's it going? Dan Schinder here on Drum Talk TV, coming to you from Globe, Arizona, up in the mountains somewhere. Why do we live here? Why do we move Drum Talk TV from Las Vegas to Globe, Arizona? Because we have 11 kids, we don't want them to know where we live. But we're here today with our guest, first time guest, Phil Ehart. Phil, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And and folks, just so you know, the reason why Phil's not on video is our Wi-Fi was a little wonky, so we just figured out that that would minimize the signal a little bit. So instead, we've got that beautiful graphic from another fork in the road, 50 years of Kansas. I got to ask you this, Phil, before we get into the tour, the new product, this amazing product, think back when you and Richard and the guys founded the band and you were getting going and you got your first album out going on tour. How far ahead did you think? Did you think like, oh, this would be great if we could do this again next year? Or yeah, we're going to have a 10 year run or you know what, when I'm 50, I'm going to, and then 50 years later, you're still doing it. What was it like back then? Did you think of the future <laughs> at all and imagine this even 20 years ago? Well, um, Humbly, uh, no, we did not. We we were very young and dumb, and it was the kind of thing that we thought, if we could just have a single on the radio, you know, in Topeka, if we could turn on a radio station in Topeka and a, and one of our songs was playing, that was success for us. We would have been done. Thank you very, thank you very much, everybody, and good night. Right, but, got some crochet uh, money because we, yeah, because we didn't, you know, we just didn't ever think that out of Topeka, Kansas, we would have a 50 year career. And um, I mean, very happy that we have, but yeah. no, we, we usually thought about a week ahead. That was about it. The gigs that we were playing at some club in Wichita, Kansas or something that, yeah. that was it for us. That was our world. And if that was your world and you didn't aspire for much more than that musically, what did you want to do when you were at that age? What did you see yourself doing? Well, we had a number of choices. We could have gone to Vietnam. That right. was a uh, uh, a choice at the time. Right. We would have been drafted, so it wasn't really a choice. Yeah. Uh, or we could go to college, mm -hmm. um, uh, any of those things. So uh, we were planning to go to college because I ought to have already had a brother in Vietnam who was telling me, don't come over here, whatever right. you do, you know. So we went to college and uh, and, you know, it was the kind of thing that, after Vietnam kind of ran its its uh, time period there, the, the band branched out more and traveled more, but it was the kind of thing that most most of, of our musical career at that time was in Topeka, and we yeah. played around that area. We didn't really travel all over the country. It was Topeka and a few surrounding cities, and that was that was pretty much it. So it was um, it it was a very limited type of. Uh, existence. We lived in a band house. Each guy uh, got a dollar a day. Uh, that was our income, was a dollar a day. We ate on a dollar a day. Wow. So you could imagine what we ate or what we didn't eat. But it was the kind of thing that uh, we decided to make a demo tape. So we made a demo tape. We thought we could do that. And we sent it off to Don Kirshner. And yeah, Mr. Came out Gold was hot on yeah. that, right? And, yeah. And we were, we were signed, uh, signed, you know, after... Uh, he checked us out, and his uh, right hand man, Wally Gold, checked us out, yeah. and really liked the band. and And uh, the rest is the rest is history. So, to answer your question, we didn't really have any visions of grandeur. You know, there weren't a lot of musicians in Topeka that that we wanted to play with because we'd already played with most of them, and most of them were in college. And so it was the kind of thing that we just kind of uh, were biding our time. We were very fortunate that that demo ended up on his desk and he actually listened to us and we were the only rock band that he ever signed wow he started a label and he signed a signed a couple of course he had the monkeys and <laughs> and kansas <laughs> <laughs> oh i you see know? the correlation yeah, <laughs> yeah well how course, plain yeah. did all the early drum parts on the kansas albums along with the monkeys right of course that's where <laughs> they all came from but yeah it was it was I, I wish i could say that you know we were famous across the state and played in a 10 state area. We were not. The real we, story we is better there. though. It really is. Well, uh, yeah, maybe to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but no, it, it hopefully was looking uh, back. It is to you. I mean, <laughs> no, it is. It is. We're, we're very, we're very fortunate. 
That's and, awesome. But to be in a place like Topeka, but discovered, be discovered by a guy out of New York City who had, you know, had the Don Kirshner's rock concert at the time. We were really, really fortunate to have that. And, and we felt very fortunate, believe me. And uh, so we were able to keep the band going and get the first album out and the second album out and the third album. And, you know, we started moving through our career, but the beginnings were very, very slim. Very, very slim. I'm sorry, it's not more exciting, but... Yeah, no, it's it. very exciting. And before we show the trailer for this new product, and we'll show a single as well uh, that Chipster, Jen over Chipster sent, which is so gracious. Thank you for that, Jen. Um, let's talk about the current lineup, which um, I'm going to bring up that image for everyone to see real quickly, which is right there. There they are. Because currently it's Phil, founding member, along with bassist, vocalist Billy Greer, vocalist, keyboardist <laughs> Ronnie Platt, violinist, guitarist David Ragsdale, keyboardist, vocalist Tom Brislin, and original founding member, guitarist Richard Williams, of course. But the this amazing package covers literally the 50-year career. There's some amazing live stuff in there. And I want to show everybody uh, a trailer really quickly, if I may. Check this out, folks. Yeah, go ahead. Here we go. Should start playing any moment. Wi-Fi, Here folks. Go. Wi-Fi. Carry Here we go. just love it some legendary music and we're going to play some newer stuff later let's talk about the product folks if you look at the description of the post you may be overwhelmed as i was being a kansas fan since the mid 70s the amount of material that this comes with first of all thank you for delivering such an awesome package phil but how how arduous or not was the process to pick out what's going to be included well, um, at the time, I was talking to Thomas Weber, who is the CEO at Inside Out, who is the label that this is on. And uh, we've done a lot of our new music with Thomas and Inside Out. And it was his idea. This had nothing to do with us. Mm. He contacted me and he said, look, this is the idea we have. We'd like to put out 50 years of Kansas music um, and license the songs from the labels that you were on. Uh, we'll pick the songs. You know, I said, look, this is, this is a big project. You guys need to do it. And he said, we're happy to do it. We'll do the whole thing. So Rich and I kind of kept an eye on the songs that they chose. We kept an eye, on, of course, on the album artwork. And if there was a song we didn't like, there was only one out of all those songs they chose that we just didn't care for. So we had them replace it with another song. Was it a monkey song? It was. <laughs> well, actually, actually, it was the Archies. It was the Archies. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but but anyway, oh, interesting. Was, uh, that's a pretty good ratio. One song got traded out, and that's it. That's amazing. Yeah, they they did a, a tremendous job, and we we owe that whole package to Inside Out. And uh, they picked the songs, they wrote the liner notes, of course, in conjunction with us and everything. We had to approve it, but uh, that that product is something they they worked a long time on it and did a great job. So we're very very pleased that they would do that that's great we got the pre-order link in the post as well i'm definitely getting it the last like year or so has just been fantastic for uh, a lot of you know bands from your era having some really great milestones and some awesome packages coming out asia elp yes genesis steve hackett yeah. it goes on and on you guys are yeah. right there and hitting the road again yeah yeah we are our uh 50th anniversary tour starts in June of 2023, obviously. Yeah. But it's uh, we're looking forward to it. And we'll be playing uh, a two-hour set with a lot of Kansas music. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Great. How are things working out with Tom Brislin? I heard he's really difficult to work with. I'm just kidding. Not, <laughs> not, not very well. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's been great. He's, yeah, uh, he's Thomas, fits Thomas right Faber in. Thomas from Inside Out uh, recommended him. Oh. And, and so I called Tom just cold. I cold called him and I said, 
okay, this is probably a call you're not going to get all the time, but this is filled with Kansas and when you blah, blah, blah. And uh, he joined the band and he's just, it's, it's been a, a real plus for us. It's been a, it's just been great to have him on board. That's great. Um, my son, Steve, who you met, he and I yeah. have a separate vlog cast podcast show that we do aside from drum talk tv that we simulcast and it's called yes shift and it's everything mm. related to the yes universe and peripheral yeah. stuff and we we were talking about when tom when when this happened what you just said and thinking back and seeing him with yes on the symphonic tour and then to end up in kansas it, it made perfect sense like we we're like yeah that's that makes sense so and, oh, and to see the videos us, yeah. of yeah him performing with you guys is just great and we have a new piece of material that we'll cover in a moment but first i want to ask how exciting is it to get back out on the road especially after the wonkiness of the last couple of years you know well it's it's um we're really looking forward to it that's all i can say you know we've got 50 50 cities booked and uh, we'll do it in 50 cities for 50 years. And it's something that we're looking forward to it and very fortunate to still be at this position and in our career, very fortunate. Yeah, that's great. What I'd like to do is show a song called Throwing Mountains. I'm gonna show the whole video. Hopefully this won't get muted by the algorithm. If it does, if it does folks, hang out because I got a few more questions that some of you drummers might like. If Phil, you don't mind me geeking out on a little drum talk with you. After all, we are Drum Talk TV. That's fine. That, that, that'd be fine. Okay. Here comes the video, folks, and let us know where you're watching from, everybody. And if you have questions, I'll peek over here at the show. Okay. And um, Phil and I will be quiet so we don't ruin this amazing piece of music. So stand by, Phil. We'll be right back. Here we go, folks. You know, I'm just going to tease people with that much of it. A lot of people have told me they haven't heard that song because when I got it the other day, I remembered it and, and I forgot about the, I hope you don't mind this term, Phil, the heaviness of it. Um, but uh, folks, if you're not familiar with the 2020 album, Absence of Presence, that's what that's from. I hope that's in the tour this coming year because I love that song. Yeah. It's in the set list, yes. Great, great, great. Um, the the is there a favorite memory that you have from the material that's included in the package? There's three discs. 
It spans a lot of different tours. Is there something that when you see that listing and the year, the tour, the album it's from that you flash back on as some sort of pivotal point or a milestone from Kansas? I know there's been many milestones over the years, of course. That's how you made it to 50 years. Well, the the biggest one is, of course, Wayward Son. Yeah. Um, that that was our first hit single. And, you know, very rare for a band like Kansas to have a hit single and, and then to have another hit single and then to have another hit single, you know, to have Wayward Son, Dust in the Wind, Point of No Return, just back to back, just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And, and, and that really shot us into a more or less a permanent headlining situation because up till then we'd been... I mean, it didn't suck opening for Queen, you know, we were, <laughs> right. we were you know, it was, we had some great uh, partnerships with uh, artists out there, but Queen was one of the biggest, doing all those dates with them back to back was, uh, again, not only coming off of Don Kirshner's rock concert television across the country, but then going on tour with Queen uh, really gave us the exposure that we needed and, and the experience that we needed, because you got to remember, we we were just a club band. We were yeah. a glorified club band. And all of a sudden, we're into the situation of opening for Queen and um, and then going from there, opening for other bands, other bands, other bands, you know, Skinner and all kinds of people. It was um, it was an exciting time. I, I will tell you one thing that's, that's somewhat, you know, bittersweet is in listening to that uh, 50th anniversary uh, compilation is hearing Robbie play. Mm, who, yeah. you know, who who passed away recently. Yeah. You know, it's it's the kind of thing, he's not with us anymore, and he's not on the road with us, he's not on any music or anything, but he's on that compilation, so it's the kind of thing that he comes back to the forefront, and he's singing, and he's playing, and, and it was, it, it's just something that we miss, you know, he was, yeah. uh, so that's something that we all kind of felt when that disc came out, wow, you, you know, Robbie's doing this, and he's doing that, and it was uh, it was great that those songs were included yeah. in the compo. Yeah, so heartbreaking that he passed shortly before his solo album came out, which is just yeah. brilliant. Such yeah. good music I, on that. Yeah, he did. He did a great job. And Robbie was a really talented guy. You know, he just he um, just one of those things. It was he passed, and there wasn't much any of us could do about it. You know. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Sure. Yeah, a lot of people chiming in saying that they, they miss him. Uh, Dan Theory says, listening from, I need new glasses, Gardner, Kansas. There you go. Kansas was my first concert, summer jam at Royals Stadium. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. What, what was the biggest thing you did learn from that big tour with Queen? What was the biggest lesson you took away from that as a working musician at the time? Well, for me, it was... Uh, learning how to pace a headlining set, how to do a headlining set, how to light a headlining set. Because mm -hmm. they were playing, it was a small, th it was a medium-sized theater tour. It wasn't, you know, a, a normal domes or anything like that. It was, uh, we were playing the smaller theaters. And so we'd, we would, after we'd play our set, we would stand off stage and watch them perform. And we'd learn so much. Oh, that's great. Uh, I mean, those guys were freaking awesome since the day they began. Yeah. You know, but we, we had to work towards it, you know. And it was the kind of thing that uh, we learned a lot. And they became good friends until this to this day. You know, Freddie Mercury's still a, a good friend. He was on our documentary. He was nice enough to do an interview with us on our Kansas oh, documentary. Awesome. And, and uh, so it's... Um, that was a real special. I will tell you a, a, a strange story with Queen, though. I'm sitting in the LAX uh, Delta uh, Sky Club, and I have my Zildjian bag. For you that don't know, Zildjian's a brand of symbols. Anyway, yeah. I had a bag, you know, that you carry on your shoulder and stuff. And I heard somebody walk by, and I heard, uh, Phil? Phil? And I look up, and it's Taylor Hawkins. Oh, wow. And, you know, of course, this was from a few years ago. Yeah. And he goes... Wow. Phil, I, I go, well, hey, Taylor, how you doing? He said, let me go get the guys. I thought, wow, that's cool. He's going to go get the rest of the band. They were, they, they, they came and sat down. They said, we want to hear, we want to hear Queen stories. Oh. I said, oh, okay. They were huge, you know, uh, Queen fans. We know you guys toured with them and stuff. We want to hear Queen stories for the next 20 or 30 minutes. We shared Queen stories, but uh, oh, nice. 
But yeah, having toured with Queen is not something a lot of bands can claim. Right, because you know, they stopped from, having opening acts back in like yeah, 80 or whatever. And, and we did back-to-back -to -back tours. Uh, we did Sheer Heart Attack and then the one after that. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, so it was very special for us to hook up with Queen and they really seemed to like us for some reason. <laughs> they, 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 they show up in all their flowery hats and all their pomp and circumstance and we're wearing overalls and cowboy boots. Right. So we thought, okay, how's this going to go together? But they were, they were great guys and they just took us under their wing and treated us really well and it was, it was great. That's it was really awesome. A, an interesting time for sure. And you learned so much along the way, not just as a drummer and musician, but the business side and became Kansas's manager. How did that transpire? And what was your personal interest in that? My personal interest was absolutely none. Oh, you know, <laughs> it was, it was the kind of, th I mean, I've been the manager of the band for 40 years now, Yeah, you know, so 50 years in the band and 40 years as the manager, but it was the kind of thing that, you know, uh, MTV came in and, and the music changed. You know, Kansas had a lot of airplay, a lot of us journey and everybody had a lot of airplay at first. And then the music changed to, uh, you know, 80s. And, uh, and so we just kind of phased out. And when we phased out, um, uh, I took over as as manager of the band. I didn't take over. It was kind of left to me. Yeah. And, uh, and I told the guys that, look, I'll manage the band and do the day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, until we get a until we get a manager. Okay, great. Oh, so well, that, that was working out. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was forty years ago. So uh, it's something that I've enjoyed doing, and and um, it's uh, it's not for everybody. I've had other musicians ask me, you know, do you think I should? Do you think I should uh, also? You know, I'm the guitar player. Do you think I should be the manager? I, I don't recommend doing what I do, especially for a guitar player. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, you said that. You said that. I did. <laughs> but I've had a lot of, a lot, not a lot, but quite a few people ask me if, if they should manage their band. Right. And I don't, rec I, I have never recommended it, but uh, it's a, it's a full-time gig as well as playing in the band, yeah. traveling all over. The world. So, so my life has been pretty much from the morning to the night after the gig when we go to, it's full-time Kansas. So, yeah. but I, no complaining. I, I'm happy to have been here and, That's and I uh, hope we can, can continue. That's awesome. If you have a few more minutes, may I ask you a few drumming-related questions? No, that's fine. I'm here, dude. You got Great. me. Thank you so much, Phil. When you sure. started out, how old were you, and what was your first like attraction? Why the drums? Was it the Beatles story, or do you have a different story? Well, um, it had a lot to do with uh, what my dad did for a living. He was a colonel in the Air Force, oh. and so every every two years we moved. Every two years. I was born in Coffeyville, Kansas. After two years, we moved. Mm -hmm. And we moved to Detroit. And then we moved to Washington, D.C. And then we moved to uh, Japan. And then back. And then back to the Philippines. Lived in, in the Philippines. Then we moved to Montana. And then after Montana, finally, we moved to Kansas. And that's eventually where I left Kansas and went to England and gave that a shot. Came back and put Kansas together. So mm -hmm. my life has just been constantly moving my whole life. So uh, I lived in such obscure places that I taught myself to play drums is what I did. I just, oh. you know, it, it was very obscure. And so I'd take pencils and a book or a pot and a pan or whatever and beat on stuff. And I finally started playing to the radio because you're right, the Beatles came along mm -hmm. and, and I thought I, I can play along to that. Well, I couldn't play along to all of it, but it was, uh, it was a big influence for all of us with the Beatles. It, it changed our lives. The Beatles, like a lot of bands you talk to, changed a lot of musicians' lives because you just went, I, I, I want to do that. I think I can do that. Yeah. So um, in Topeka, I started getting together with other self-taught musicians, and we formed, eventually formed Kansas. So, But That's yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm totally self-taught. That's awesome. I have a similar story, but a different band. I, I'm just a little bit too young, and I'm not joking, folks. I'm just a little bit too young to have seen the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. My thing was I wanted to be an oceanographer. I was going to be the next Jacques Cousteau. I started oh, playing drums shortly before seven, and at 14, my dad jacked all that up. I was pretty good, but when I was yeah. 14, my dad took me to my first concert, Led Zeppelin at the L.A. Forum, in 1977 oh. and by the third song i thought 
wait a minute, that could be a job, like playing music, all those people appreciating you. So when I got yeah. my hearing back three days later, told my mom sure. and dad, I don't think I want to be an oceanographer anymore. My mother very enthusiastically said, oh, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a professional drummer like John Bonham. So after we hit her with the paddles a couple times and revived her, she actually found an audition a year later. I was 15 and I toured the United States for the first time at 15 playing drums with a singing <laughs> group called Spirit of America. I opened oh, yeah. for Seals and yeah. Crofts, Harp, Blue Oyster Cult. It was amazing. Sure. And that was what Good. bit me. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. That's uh that's something to be proud of. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And you know, inspiration is important. That's why I always like to ask when people like me and people younger than me look up to folks like you, I think it's it's important to know where our heroes were inspired because sometimes as musicians, just like actors and actresses, they get stereotyped. Well, he's a metal drummer, so I'm sure his influences were but if they're of a certain age, there wasn't metal for them to be influenced by. You look at Bill Ward, Mitch Mitchell, you know, huge jazz drummers before they were yeah. in Black Sabbath or played with Jimi Hendrix. Who were some of your first influences, Phil? Um, other other than, like you said, Ringo with the stuff you played along with. Yeah, no, my biggest influence to this day even is still Ian Pace with oh, Deep Purple. yeah. He's one I mean, of my top influences, too. Oh, man. I mean, you know, Hush was their first song in the United States. And I was in high school at the time. And 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 uh, so I started listening to that and tried to figure that, out on my, figure that song out on my drum set and stuff. But album after album after album, Ian was always, uh, and to this day, still, is it, such an awesome player. And, uh, and it was odd that our guitar player, Steve Morse, for two albums, then yeah. went and joined Deep Purple. Yeah. And, and, and he said, you got to come see us so I can introduce you to Ian. I said, yeah. Well, we never had the chance. Our paths never crossed. Oh. But I, I understand he's a very nice person. And yeah. Steve Morris raised, raved about him. And uh, so I, I had some heroes. But um, mine was was uh, mainly Ian Pace. That's and, awesome. Uh, and also, also Michael Shreve from Santana. Oh, yeah. Was a... Uh, was uh, another incredible. I, I just like Santana, you know. They yeah, were, yeah. You know what? I'm glad you brought Michael up, and I'll get back to Ian in a moment. Folks, if you yeah. haven't seen this, and Phil, I'm sure you have, Santana at Tanglewood, 1970, is one of the best concert films. There's no fancy yeah. lighting, no projections, no lasers, flash pots, just raw music. Greg Raleigh on lead vocals, Hammond organ, right. and the solo that Michael does is amazing. Uh, and then the yeah, two he, other... He, he was very young. He, he was very young. He was young. like 20, I think. Yeah, yeah 19 think, or 20. Yeah, 19, 20 years old. He was a very young person and just uh, godlike, you know. Yeah. So so him and, him and Ian had a lot to do. Um, Santana musically didn't have more to do with us, but Michael did. Michael gotcha. Shreve had a lot to do with me. But uh, Deep Purple was uh, somewhat progressive at the time. You know, they, they had a lot of different uh, segments to their songs and that influenced us. But we we were really, because we lived in such an, uh, an obscure part of the world, we, we couldn't even get, uh, you know, European imports. Uh, wow. You know, we had to listen to the big radio stations and every once in a while they'd play you know, ELP or they'd play Chicago or they'd play the dead or, you know, yeah. living in Kansas, we were inspired by all kinds of different music. So we never really said to her, let's be a prog band because they didn't even exist. Yeah. And there was no such thing as a prog band. Let's Especially just, in uh, our area, right? Yeah, no, it, yeah. It, <laughs> there wasn't much in our area at all. And, but, uh, but yeah, Ian has always just been the kind of drummer that, uh, has influenced me you know he really has that's awesome me too and i knew that um <laughs> excuse me getting over a cold i knew that carmine at peace was like best friends with him and i was interviewing carmine once he's been a great supporter of the show and i i said you know deep purple's coming to town we were based in vegas then i said do you think you might be able to put in the good word he just called him on the phone right there while we were having lunch and when he hung up and he set it up, he's been on twice, but Carmine put yeah. it perfectly. He said, Ian Pace his, with his drumming could swing a freight train. If yeah. that doesn't uh, describe uh, his playing, right? 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I wasn't the only one that noticed him. Believe me. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Uh, he really took America by storm, as did Deep Purple. But they were always bigger in Japan. They were always bigger in Europe. They played behind the Iron Curtain a lot. Yeah. They didn't in the early days. They came here, but they didn't come here that much. And so I never really got to see them. Uh, but it was something that, uh, you know, I always listen to them. To this day, yeah. I still listen to them. Yeah. That's great. Look, yeah. one, one of our last questions, and we'll let you go, and I'll check comments. I just want to make sure we're good. Okay, we are. Um, yeah. What music do you enjoy listening to, Phil, that people might not expect to hear from you? Because like I say, people often get stereotyped because of what they're known for playing. Is there any guilty pleasures or music outside of that? Uh, well, people have asked me that before. I, I don't, um, there's just not a whole bevy of bands that pop into my head mm -hmm. or other styles of music. I, I, I will tell you one style of music that I listen to that I, ju I just sit there with my mouth open. Anything having to do with Buddy Rich Orchestra. Uh, you know, yeah. any anything that Buddy plays with his big band I could watch day in and day out, just yeah. as long as the camera's on him. Yeah, you yeah. know, because because again, uh, like Ian Pace, you know, he he was one of a kind. Yeah, there, there were no other. There were no other uh, Buddy Riches. It didn't exist, and he always had the most smoking bands. They were just yeah. unbelievable, and uh, so yeah, that's a bit off the beaten path. It's nothing I've ever emulated. Mm -hmm. I've never turned to the guys in the band. Let's let's do something kind of like Buddy. Ray. No, that that was never <laughs> said because we knew that we couldn't do anything like that, you know. But uh, but he has an influence. Buddy has influenced so many so many drummers. But he kind of gets to the point where he's so incredible. He just kind of leaves the planet, you know. It's kind of thing. He starts playing, and you can almost see him levitate. Yeah, you know, he just, yeah, he out of body experiences and. and uh, and, and to this day, even though I, I don't know the, the young man's name, there is a new drummer that that's really coming pretty close to Buddy. Oh, Greg and, Potter or um, uh, the, well, the younger is, one? Is, uh, Greg, uh, definitely, but the younger one it's, is the um, one that's really starting to take over a I lot think of I that. have his name on my whiteboard. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a weird last name. Kind yeah, of a, I've spoken yeah. to him to come on. I. I, oh, we great. wrote back and forth. He's I know incredible. who you mean. He's amazing, right? That left yeah. hand, it looks oh. like, it looks, how's he doing that? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, and, and, and there, there's so many great drummers. I mean, there's just a million of them. Yeah. But Buddy mm -hmm. was, uh, in my early days, I got to see him live. He, and this band actually came to Topeka and oh. got to see him and stuff. But but it, it just, he leaves a mark. Whoever see, leaves a mark. Remember the time you saw Buddy Rich? Yeah, I remember that, you know. And it's, um and he's still all over YouTube, you know, all his yeah. uh, recordings and his playing and stuff. So that that's one drummer that he hasn't influenced my playing because I'm not good enough. And I, I don't play in that style. I, I'm not a jazz big band type of drummer. I'm a rock drummer. So yeah. but I, I appreciate it. You know, I watch yeah. it. And I, I'm just left in awe by his uh, prowess on the drum set. Always has. Always has been. That's awesome. Jaw dropping. Absolutely. Um, yeah. My last question for you, Phil, is when you're not doing music business stuff, when you're not rehearsing, writing, performing, recording, managing, when you're not doing any of that, what do you like to do? How do you like to spend your time when you're away from work, as it were? I sleep. <laughs> A good deep nap. <laughs> hey, there's nothing going on in the band. Okay. Wow, I can actually go to bed. All right, I'm going to bed. And uh, but no, um, I, you know, I spend an awful lot of time practicing. Uh, Kansas is Kansas music is something you got to stay up on, yeah. and um, and uh, but I, I I play golf. Oh. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm a golfer. Well, I'm not a golfer. I play golf. I'm not a golfer. Yeah, my my but favorite I, holes the big pink castle. Yeah, yeah, the one with the yeah with the by rotating. the water mill. Yeah, yeah, the clown face and stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, being at home is great for me. I, you know, I have kids and married, of course, and have a dog. And I have kind of a, but I have a great big, huge drum room that I'm sitting in right now that's filled with all kinds of drums and all kinds of cool stuff. 
Great. And lots of times, and lots of times, I just come in here and and uh, I'll put the headphones on and just play to stuff. You know, and oh, just, that's awesome. That's, that's one of the things I told uh, the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Uh, I, they had a song I think called "The Pretender" or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I played to that song all the time, and I said. You guys aren't going to believe this, but I play to that song. Oh, they that's go, great. What? And I said, that's great. I mean, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You play to our stuff? And I went, yeah, why not? You know, you guys yeah, are great. That's great. And uh, so I I, uh, I try to stay stress-free. You know, I, yeah. I try not to get involved in too much stuff that causes stress. And the, so I enjoy the band and I enjoy managing the band. And that's that's what I spend the majority of my time doing is that's great. is Kansas. That's what I do. That's I gotta ask this a bonus question if I may because my, wa- no, my wife <laughs> my wife and I love dogs. We have two dogs and a yeah big mink who cat. What kind of dog do you have? The dog I have is called a um, it's called a cream. This is part of the name a cream golden retriever oh. doodle. Oh. And, yeah, and a, a golden retriever. She's not a doodle yet. She's her puppies are going to be doodles. I'm sorry. She's a female, and nice. and um, and so yeah, it's a golden retriever except it's white. Yeah, and I've it's, seen it, like two of those in my whole life. Yeah, they're bred in uh, not bred, but they're originally from Ireland. Ireland, yeah. And so if you can just imagine a golden retriever that's pure white, and she's a great dog. She's just a year. We've had her for a year, that's and um, so that's my dog. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Phil, thanks so yeah. much for taking time oh, to join no, us. Fun. Thank you. Hang you on the it. line just for a moment after we say goodbye to okay. the audience. Folks, thanks okay. so much for following what we do here on Jump Talk TV. Look at the details in the post. You can see the whole layout of all the wonderful material. 50 years of Kansas, as well as the pre-order link. They're hitting the road. 50 cities starting June of 2023. Uh, So I hope to see some of you out there because I really got to see that tour. Thanks, everybody, so much. And we'll.